Looks like a bloodthirsty bunch. We will find out if it's all for show. <laughs> This statement of stewardship reads like a mundane description of lawmaking, but it is one of our most treasured documents. Gondor is a realm of law, not of kingly pronouncements. Since the disappearance of Aena, our last king, Gondor has thrived under the guidance of ruling stewards, each a lord of Minas Tirith. The steward's office is hereditary, and its decrees are law, unless a king someday returns to Gondor's vacant throne. And even then, I'm not sure what use we have for a monarch, save to keep the cushion on the throne warm. These were the words that freed Gondor from its kings. And yet the steward rules from a throne room, does he not? It's scarcely different. lost forever. But some things were lost forever. What did this device do? Probably nothing. The Numenorians experimented too much and perfected too little.
There are no dwarves in Mordor. At first glance, this land would seem to suit them. Plenty of stone for carving and ore veins to mine. This shield belonged to a dwarf from another age who did come to Mordor, though not as a craftsman nor a miner. Now that Minas Ethel no longer contains the orcs within Mordor, the dwarves will have to put down chisel and hammer and pick up their shields once more. A dwarven shield? But where are the dwarves? Deep underground, coveting their treasure, no doubt. It has long been customary for the people of Minas Ethel to offer an amphora of water or wine to any visitor from beyond our walls. Such travelers were rare, especially recently, and making the trek to the frontier almost guaranteed a thirsty guest. But when our need was greatest, no one from Gondor came to our gates, thirsty or otherwise. This amphora, it is older than it appears. Just as well we reclaimed it then. The Yorks would sully it with their grog. I do not fear the orcs, but in the deep of night I will admit this. I fear their drums. An orc can be defeated in battle. His threat can be walled off or outmaneuvered. But the low rumbling of the drums, that cannot be halted by any artifice of man. Those drums are the heartbeat of their factories, and every beat marks the orcs' relentless advance. We seized these drums in a raid and I locked them up in the Great Hall so that no orc could ever play them again. So the orcs have musicians among them? Hardly. Uruks are made for warfare, not artistry.
Let's think about ending your life. He must be stopped. I saw a battle upon a tower. I saw the Dark Lord defeated and a Bright Lord take his place. But the world did not change. I repeat, the world did not change. She turned away from Sauron, as did I. And yet she cannot see that. She fears you. She fears what will become of Middle-earth when we defeat him.
Khan understood that power did not come from armies, but the willingness to sacrifice, to lie in wait. This is the truth he taught me, and so I lie in wait. And when the day comes, I will make my sacrifice. Sacrificed the ring. She gave it to us. There is calculation in her every move. We can never trust her. little of the Harajan, mostly folk tales told around the campfire. The stories say they are fierce, pitiless warriors, as cruel as the orcs and as stern as the southern mountains beyond which they hail. Those folk tales convince many a Gondorian child to behave, but I cannot reconcile them with what I see in the only Harajan I know, Berenor. He is fierce in battle and stern when needs must, but cruel? Never. Strange clothing. And yet to the men of the South, it is as ordinary as your tunic. Only distance makes this precious.
Miss Ethel held many treasures far grander than this necklace, though none more precious to me. When I was a little girl, I would sneak into the Great Hall and take this necklace from its locked cabinet, thanks to a loose latch that only a child's hand could reach. For hours, I would admire myself in the mirror, imagining myself an elegant lady of Gondor, much like my mother must have been. My father caught me eventually, but as punishment, I received only a lecture. Perhaps he didn't mind seeing his daughter in such finery. I'm surprised this necklace isn't hanging from some orc's neck. Perhaps their stubby fingers cannot work such a delicate clasp. truth of Mordor. The orcs have been here far longer than men. Far longer than the Dark Lord himself, even. This place belongs to them, and in their own way, the orcs revere their heritage. We found this sword in a crude shrine, after all. Yet imagine what the orcs and Mordor could become if freed of the Dark Lord's corruption. The orcs can temper a blade, I'll give them that. They produce weapons in mass, but they give little care to each one. Sagras. Here in Mordor, loyalty passes from Orc to Captain to Overlord, and the chain of loyalty ends in a ring of power.
Sadras. Here in Mordor, loyalty passes from Orc to Captain to Overlord, and the chain of loyalty ends in a ring of power. Everyone in Mordor is ultimately loyal to a ring, but rings themselves have no loyalty. Their wearers and their makers would do well to remember this. of grace, yet we were taken with this beautiful visitor bearing gifts. Thank <laughs> you. 
taught us a bitter lesson. Those in fair forms use grace to hide their true nature. That grace leads to trust, a weakness they can exploit. In the Second Age, we honored Tirith, the virtue of vigilance. We watched our enemies closely, only to be deceived by Sauron in the guise of a friend. True vigilance means watching friend and foe alike. Especially in Mordor, ally can become enemy in a heartbeat.
They stalk and lurk, then lash out so furious. Yet our bulwark is proof against their rage. Our hard-ringed, hand-forged armor impervious to predations from the powers of darkness, no matter how vicious or how vile. To assail the Bright Lord is to falter and fail. Somebody's... Shit! 